RVM estimated values are generated by an automated valuation model that uses on-market and off-market MLS listing data plus publicly recorded sold data to provide an estimated property value. RVMs are available for single-family residences, condominiums, and similar multifamily properties. They're updated twice a month. The RVM confidence score describes the expected accuracy of a property's RVM. A five-star rating is the highest confidence rating and zero is the lowest. The confidence score is based on the outcomes of multiple automated valuation models. A high score indicates that the models yield similar estimated values for the property. A low score indicates that the models yielded a wide range of estimated values for a property. On this page, you just want to scroll through and confirm that all of the facts are correct. If you want to change any information, for example, here we have garage attached, you can click the drop down arrow to say yes or no. We can click in garage spaces and we could change that to a three, for example. Continuing to scroll down, we're just verifying all of the facts about the property. If you need to add additional basic facts about the community, click Add Additional Row and scroll through the list. And I have added Gated Community to my list. So we'll add Gated Community. And then I've also added, let's go ahead and click Add Another Row. I've also added waterfront. So then we can enter the value here for the gated community as well as for the waterfront. If you'd like to add additional basic facts about the property but you don't find them in the list, click on add another row and scroll through the list here and don't find them. You can simply add that information right down here where it says select or enter your own fact. So, for example, we can add canal front. And then click on add. And now we've added canal front. If you need to remove something that you've added, you can click the waste basket and it will take that line away. Once you're done, simply click confirm facts and close, or if you need to reset the values, you have the reset button. If there's a property that you know you want to use for a comp, click here to add a known property, enter the property's address or the MLS listing number and click add. Otherwise, just click right here to search for comps. We'll scroll down the page just a bit in the property type field, the system will always default to select the same type of property as your subject property, so you probably don't want to change that. And then for property status, the system is defaulted to pull active, pending, and closed listings, but you could add other statuses. For example, if you wanted to add expired listings, you can do that. Click here to exclude distressed properties from your comp results. Distressed properties include short sales, pre-foreclosures, foreclosed, auction properties, REO, and bank-owned properties. 
Next, select the off-market date for those closed or expired listings. Your options range from properties that closed or expired within the last week all the way up to 18 months. You could also enter a date range if you like. In the size field, you can make changes as desired. Our subject property has three bedrooms. By default, we see the properties with a minimum of two bedrooms will be pulled. This will pull homes that have two bedrooms or more. If you want to narrow down your comp search results, you can enter a maximum number. The baths field works the same way. For living area square footage, the system default is a bit high. It's currently set to pull comps that have up to a 25% difference in living area. Appraisers typically try to stay within 15%, so you can change this as you wish. You'll notice the lot size isn't checked off like these other three criteria. This means the lot size will not be taken into consideration when searching for comps. You can click the box and change that if you like. And like living square footage, most appraisers try to keep the lot size within a 15% difference of the subject property's lot size. You can also change how the lot size is pulled by square footage or by acres. Next is the price range field. So you notice it's not checked, so it won't be taken into consideration. But if you want it to be, you can certainly check that box and enter a range if you like. The next field is keywords. So if you want to search for homes with keywords, for example, if your subject property has a pool and you want to enter private pool, or if your subject property is a canal front property, you could add canal front as keywords. And you see here, you can add up to six keywords. Another way of searching for comps would be to utilize the map tools. You can draw a shape, select a custom area, or you can use a specific geography. For example, you could say pull comps within this zip code or within this neighborhood. And once you've made your selections, just click that search button. Our comp results are in, so we can review them by scrolling down the screen. The first thing we come to is the map, and we will see the comps that were pulled right here on the map. You've got a legend just beneath the map with the subject property pinned to the map. We can see the blue dots are going to be those active listings. We've got the blue dots with the black circle. Those are going to be pending listings. We've got recently closed here as the blue square. And then we will see some gray squares and those can be closed, withdrawn, expired, or canceled listings. So you'll find those. For example, here's one and you can click on that to get more details about that listing. You can click on any of these and get more details. So we would just click here to do that, to get those details about the property and decide if we wanna use it as a comp. And if we do, we can click this box right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this and we'll go ahead and scroll down and see our list of comps. Here we have our list of comps that the system pulled for us and we're currently looking at the closed listings. I can click on the address right here. It will open in a new page, or I can click on details here to get more information to decide if I wanna use this as a comp. For time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and select the top three closed listings that we have here. You notice as I select these listings, they populate on the right-hand side of the screen. If I accidentally select a listing I don't want to use, I can click on any one of these and select to remove it from the comps. Now we'll just scroll down until we come to those pending listings. Here we have the pending listings. Once again, we can review those by clicking on details. And again, for time's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and select the top three. And then we'll continue on to our active listings. It appears that the system has only pulled in one active listing. We could get the details of this listing. In a circumstance like this, you might want to tweak your search criteria to pull in additional active listings. To do that, we can scroll back up to about the middle portion of the screen, and we're going to find this button right here that says Modify Search. So this would allow us to tweak our criteria 
to pull in additional active listings to use as comps, but I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down and select this active comp. Now I could click here and update and my valuation and close it, or we can scroll back up to the top portion of the screen. And once again, we have an opportunity to review our comps. We can, again, we can remove those comps. We can click here to remove all of the comps, but I think we're ready to click on update valuation and close. Now we're ready to adjust our comps. As you can see, the subject property is on the left. On the right, we have the comparable properties. You have the ability to change the position of the properties. So we can click the drop down and we could move this, for example, into like the fourth position. And you can just move any of these around. If you click the X, that will remove the comp from your list altogether. By clicking the next button, we can scroll through and see the other listings. If we want to change the size of the photo, we can click here and make the photos bigger or smaller. And you can also scroll through the photos. So you notice we have the front elevation for most of these. So we can scroll through these pictures until we get that front elevation. Whatever you have here is what's gonna show up in your report. And then, of course, we could click next again and see that last listing. So now we have the front elevation photo for each one of those listings. As we continue to scroll down, we come to this slider bar. The slider bar allows you to rate your comps compared to your subject property. So if we move the slider bar to the left and say that this comp is worse on some level than our subject property, then that is going to add value to our subject property. You can see here how it's going to impact that subject property. And each time you move it down, it adjusts it a little bit more. It's 5% for each click. So I'm gonna move it back to same. And now when I move it toward the better column, you notice that it takes value away from the subject property by 5% for each click. If we had made the adjustments, of course we would see them here in this column and that's what would show up on the report. And as we move these, it's going to change. Each time we move these, it has an effect on that subject property. We can see the proximity of each one of these listings to the subject property, and then those basic facts. So we can make additional adjustments here if we choose to. Right down here, we can add notes if we want to and we have the opportunity to click this box if we want to include those notes in our report. And so that's it. You're just adjusting based on better or worse as to what you know about the properties and your subject property. When you're all done, you'll just click Update Valuation and Close.